In this New World Weapons video, we're going to be taking a look at the Spear Weapon. This is one of the weapons that scales off Dexterity and Strength. It has one of the longest reaches of any weapons in the game, if not the longest, and it's very good in situations where you're trying to hit an enemy with a shorter weapon. The Dexterity Scaling is better than the Strength Scaling for this weapon, so if you're using this weapon, you're probably going to want to focus on Dexterity instead of Strength, although you can use it with other Strength weapons if you want, but you will get more damage out of Strength. The light attack does 100%, the heavy attack does 130%, and the charged heavy attack does 165%. That's pretty hard. I believe the hammer is the only one higher than that at 170%. What I really like about the charged heavy attack as well is that it extends your reach by longer than you'd think, allowing you to hit things much further away. Reach is a huge factor in this game because mobility plays a big role, so reach is really good, and that is a great way to open combat. As you might imagine, the spear does primarily thrust damage. This is good against animals primarily. So if you're out hunting, uh, this is a very good choice. Undead tend to resist thrust damage. So if you're out doing like uh, dungeons where they're undead, or maybe you're fighting or some quest areas where they're undead, this is not going to be a good weapon to use there because a lot of your damage is going to be resisted or reduced. However, both the sweep and cyclone abilities, if you have them slotted, both do strike damage or blunt damage, which is good against these enemy types. Uh, and is neutral against animals. So if you're, you know, if you're out farming, whatever, you're questing between animals and undead, and you want to make sure that you can deal, you know, okay damage against these types, probably having these two abilities on your bar to face the undead enemies and then use light and heavy attacks or whatever for the animals would probably be your best bet. One thing I do want to mention about the Spear of Potential Downside is the hitbox is kind of janky sometimes. It has a rather narrow hitbox. It's not a weapon that's really good with light and heavy attacks, or just besides the attacks I just mentioned, the abilities I just mentioned. It's not very good at hitting multiple targets besides those abilities. A lot of weapons have horizontal attacks that can hit multiple enemies, so even if you're surrounded and you don't have any abilities off cooldown, you can still deal with them. The spear's weakness is that it has trouble doing that. That doesn't mean you can't hit multiple enemies with light attacks, but you have to be positioned very perfectly, which is not something you have to do with some other weapons. Okay, moving to the zoner skill tree first. This is your AoE skill tree slash utility skill tree. Has a lot of really good passives that increase damage. If you're looking to crank damage, passives here are really good. Um, both Cyclone and Sweep are good AoEs. As I mentioned, they're good against Undead, but they're going to be primarily how you deal AoE damage if you're trying to do AoE with a Spear. Talking about Cyclone first, this ability basically hits everything around you in a 360 degree arc, pushes it back, and slows everything. Really good in any scenario where you're completely surrounded. PvP particularly comes to mind. Being able to slow enemies for three seconds means that if they get that close to you, you hit them with a Cyclone. They're not going to be able to get away from your team very easily, and they should be able to finish them off. Obviously, this ability is going to be really good in dungeons as well, where there's a lot of undead. If you're using a Spear in the dungeons, you'll probably have to have this ability tend to pull lots of enemies at once and you're going to need that strike damage type in there. Sweep is a really good ability. It hits in sort of like a, I don't know exactly how many degree arc. I want to say about 150 degree, 120 degree arc in front of you. It's not all the way around you, but it allows you to trip enemies in front of you. Really good in PvE and PvP. Again, if you're in a dungeon and you're fighting multiple enemies, um, this could be a really good way to help knock, not only knock them all down so that your teammates uh, aren't taking damage, but to hit multiple enemies with one swing, which is something the spear can't do otherwise uh, very easily. So this is another great weapon for dungeons, and it also has applications in PvP if you're surrounded by enemies, but you're probably going to use this in larger scale PvP. I doubt you're going to use this in small scale PvP. In this tree, you also have the Javelin ability, which is obviously not an AoE. It allows you to grab your spear and throw it, and if you upgrade this ability, you can knock down targets. A lot of people use this in PvP to knock down an enemy that's trying to run away so that his teammates can catch up to them or that player can catch up to them. Um, it's also a good ability to lead with if you're charging into battle, you and your teammates, uh, you knock the guy down, then you guys jump on top of him before you can even get up. It's a good way to begin combat. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it's a great way to gain an upper hand periodically. And you could even use it point blank to knock something down if you need to. The capstone for this line gives you plus 25% damage at full stamina. You don't use stamina when you attack. So this is really, really strong if you basically are using abilities, you're using light attacks and heavy attacks, but you're not really dodging much uh, and you're not blocking much. That's going to increase your damage by 25% as a whole. You know, if you're out questing or doing whatever and you're just trying to kill enemies as quickly as possible, or maybe you're in dungeons and you're DPSing where you're not really blocking, dodging a whole lot, this is a great capstone to have. 
Moving along to the Impaler skill tree, this skill tree is primarily, I would say, single target damage. This is if you're fighting one strong enemy or you're just trying to down one target really quickly. It's very good for that in PvE or in PvP as well. Most of the passives, just like the Zoner tree, involve increasing your damage or your critical chance in some way. So probably if you're playing a spear build, you're going to put a lot of points in both trees. Um, some builds, you know, you want to focus more on one tree than the other, but in the spear build, if you're just going for a damage setup, you're going to need passives from both trees. You can't get both capstones, and I think the zoner capstone is better than the impaler one, just generally. But you're going to need some of those passives in both trees in order to get maximum damage. Looking at the perforate ability, this ability hits three times really quickly in rapid succession, doing a little bit less damage than a normal attack because you're doing three rapid strikes. I really like this ability. One thing about this spear that you'll learn if you use it at all is that it sort of has a rhythm to it. Um, your first attack is kind of slow, your second attack is kind of faster than the first attack, and then there's a lull and that sort of repeats. So generally speaking, you want to try and time your abilities in between two light attacks, for instance. Um, so maybe you use an ability, then you light attack, light attack, then you use another ability. You don't want to try and cancel out of the first light attack or after the first light attack and use an ability if possible. You still can. Maybe it's the best thing to do in the scenario. Sometimes it's going to be. But generally speaking, you're going to get your second light attack much faster than a first one. So if you break that sort of two hit combo with an ability, your next attack is going to be slower. So you want to try and avoid that if possible. So what I like to do generally is like open, you know, if I'm out questing, open with a charged heavy attack and then use this ability and then go light attack, light attack, and then use another ability, something like that. Skewer is a really good ability that sets bleeding on the target. The bleed doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but you'd be surprised how often it'll get you kills uh, in both PvE and PvP. That slow bleed just harasses enemies, keeps the, keeps the pressure on them, particularly in PvP. And on enemies, a lot of enemies, like particularly animals, they'll run by you or charge through you. Uh, and they'll get out of range and you'll be chasing after them. And sometimes they'll just bleed out because of this ability. And it has very, very good range. It seems like it's a little bit longer than a charged heavy attack or fairly close to it. So it's not a bad ability to open with instead of a charged heavy attack if you want. So you would, in this case, you would go with that ability, light attack, light attack, and then use the other ability. Perforate. Fold Kick is an ability I don't think too many people are going to use early game. Um, it's not only hard to land sometimes because the distance is shorter than you'd think. But it does stun the target. Um, a lot of times when you're fighting, stunning isn't really that important if you're out questing or something like that. You're just trying to kill it as quickly as possible. Stuns can be very useful against hard-to-kill enemies or players, obviously, if you're PvPing. It can give you a minute to heal up, or it can allow you to get some damage in where they can't do anything. But the main thing you're going to want to use this for if you're using it is the final upgrade of it actually reduces the cooldown of all your other spiller abilities by 30% if you land it. That is significant. That's like four or five seconds in some cases that it shaves off. So if you want to have a faster rotation of abilities, you may want to use this ability in there. At least as soon as you get that upgrade. The Exploit Weakness Capstone increases your damage on the target for you know each debuff it has. This is to a maximum of 30%. I feel like this is harder to do. Maybe if you used a, a secondary weapon like a hatchet and you debuffed with a hatchet before you moved in with the spear, this might be easier to keep up. But just generally speaking, I think the other one's going to be easier to use for more people, so I recommend that one. Good weapons to pair this with are basically any other dex-based weapons, whether if you want to use like a rapier or maybe you want to use a ranged weapon. Hatchet is not a bad choice, even though it's primarily strength scaling, it does still strength off dexterity. As I mentioned before, you can get a lot of debuffs on the target before they close the distance, and then they're really debuffed and you can mess them up if you're like PvPing or something like that. But if you want to do range, you know, using a musket or a bow is not a bad choice. You can ding them a bit from range, and then when they get close, you can hit them with a spear. Something about the spear, though, is it doesn't really have a lot of ways to gain ground on other players. So you may want to use something if you're PvPing, like the rapier, where you have an ability that allows you to move forward very quickly and maybe catch up, or something like the hatchet that allows you to run faster. These are reasons to use those, or maybe, you know, maybe that's not a problem for you. Enemies start running away. You use a bow or a musket on them um, because these are dexterity scaling as well and you just shoot them while they're running away and that's the end of that but generally speaking i think you're going to want to match this with some sort of dexterity scaling weapon primarily and whether that's ranged or melee is really up to you and what sort of activity you're doing you may want to have like a, a musket for when you're out hunting animals and then maybe another weapon like a hatchet or maybe a rapier if you're going out to bvp or maybe you're going out questing and you're getting into groups of enemies up close often and you need some more abilities to use frequently 
That's it for the spear weapon video. We're going to be doing more of these video guides, so stay tuned for those. If you have further questions about the game, be sure to drop by the New World Wiki, or you can drop by our Twitch channel and ask me questions on stream. What did you guys think of the spear video? What weapons are you guys going to use at the launch of the game? Let us know in the comments below.